Hello there, Adam Bazalgette here from Scratch Golf Academy. Today, the right arm trail arm, if you like, right arm for the right-handed golfer. How should it work in the swing? We're going to deal with both backswing and downswing through impact. It is very important. You get this thing working properly, it will really add consistency of your game. I think some common sense, easy things you can implement. So first thing I would say, and we'll have this theme throughout the video, stay away from contrived unnatural things. If you want to hit the ball a long way relative to your capabilities, you need to be pretty natural. So should it stay tucked in? Where should it be? Let's start with the backswing. Quick look online here. So there's Justin Rose on the left, Michelle Wee on the right. Let's have a quick look here. So obviously her arms are somewhat connected at a dress, so we would expect in the very beginnings of the backswing to see some connection still. But as you can see, that doesn't mean her tricep or elbow down there at the bottom are completely connected. There's Justin Rose again, right arm fairly connected. Watch it from here though. Watch how the right arm will rise a little bit and we really get a good view of this box type of position, a right angle if you will in that arm. We'll see roughly the same with Michelle. Beautiful look there and that keeps all the space we want out here, keeps that elbow out a little to the side of the body. So naturally, at a good address, my triceps, both of them are resting a little bit against my chest and certainly in a nice clean takeaway where there's a little bit of togetherness, that would stay intact. But once I've cleared this back leg, I'm trying to get this arm, as you saw there, in a strong position. Now picture throwing a ball, whoops, skipping a rock or something, or even throwing a football. Generally, it's more of a right angle and you get this elbow under that wrist because that gives you some ability to create power. So once you've created, once you've had the takeaway, you want to create the kind of position here from where you could throw the club. Picture holding the club at the very bottom and one-handed tossing that thing like that and you'll get the feel. You have to fiddle a little bit in a mirror, find a throwing position, get in front of a mirror and then add your golf pivot if you like and just see where your arm fits. Now briefly as we start to move forward let's look at how that might look differently for different players depends on the length of your arms and your flexibility in this trail shoulder. Let's have a quick look at that. Charles Howell on the left, Lee Westwood on the right. Let's call his forearm 78 degrees and we'll call Westwood's, I say call it 20, 20 degrees difference let's say. Pretty big difference. That would almost certainly be accounted for by right shoulder flexibility. So anything that's either roughly on the body angle or a little more down from the body angle is acceptable. I would say a preference would be a little bit more down, but if you're not that flexible and you try to force this L, the forearm in too much, you'll probably lose your body angle. So get what's natural for you. And secondly, when you get a longer arm person, you can see they would naturally a bit be a bit more height in the hands at the top of the backswing versus someone with a bigger upper body and a little bit less arm length. As I say, one of the top recommendations I could give golfers is take a few minutes every week and get in front of a mirror. A few hours a year would make a difference. Find out that good position for your physique. If you're not that flexible, your arm will be more this way. If you've got long arms, it will look a little bit higher, etc. Get that in a strong position and then get your pivot and just see what fits. You don't even necessarily have a golf club. See what's natural for your body. Get used to it a little bit so that when you get to the range, you can do it. Okay, downswing. Tucking it in, I don't think that's going to get the job done. Let's have a look. So there's Tiger Woods, same image, both sides of the screen. That's in the backswing. So what do I mean by we're not trying to tuck the right arm in? If you actually look at his swing, his right arm gets very close to his side coming in. But what's really happening? What's causing that? Look at the angle, let's say, between golf club and forearm there and compare it at that point in the downswing and just look how much more acute or dramatic it is. So what we're trying to do is load the club shaft, load the right wrist, and when you do that, or if you do that properly, you will undoubtedly, let me put Charles Howell over here, you will undoubtedly see a significant narrowing of the arc and you'll see that arm come there. But just without that, trying to stick your arm in there, I don't think works that well. So let's have a look at Charles Howell and we'll get further into the downswing. Let's put Davis Love next to him. Charles Howell obviously hitting a driver. First time I ever saw Charles Hal hit a ball was right up next to him. I went over to say hi to Ledbetter when I was up there working for him and Charles was taking a lesson. He introduced me and said, why don't you hang out? I almost quit golf that day watching his ball flight and the sizzle of his shots wasn't like anything I could do, but uh, anyway, I got back to playing. So let's look at Charles. Dramatic increase, dramatic load, 
That's what we're looking for. That will guarantee your right arm's there. But let's go beyond that now, and let's look at how the right arm starts to straighten. And it straightens, as you'll see, in this direction, because you're trying to apply pressure to the golf ball. You're trying to get the club in front of you and pop that thing. That is about as well as you can do it right there. Davis Love a little bit less pronounced with his loading of the trail arm and wrist coming down but phenomenal at getting the pressure against the ball, right arm well past the right leg. You can hit the ball before the ground and compress it properly when you do that. When you see someone that's able to get their hands over there, you can be almost sure they can strike the ball with, uh, with some sting and some meat on it. If you like this video, always appreciate it if you'd subscribe or share the video. Let's work on it. So we're assuming a few things, grip posture, and we're assuming that you've had a nice takeaway, but most importantly, you're loaded and ready to go. Why do you see this happen? Grip the club at the bottom of the, grab a short iron, grip it with just your fingertips near the bottom of the handle, club heads off the ground, take it back a little bit and make a little bit of a dynamic move. And you'll see how the end of the club bounces a little bit. It's natural. You'd see it skipping a rock, hitting a tennis ball if you're good at tennis or whatever. Don't, no need to try to tuck this in. That is very unnatural. Again, these contrived type of movements, that's not wrong that the arm's in, but just trying to do that consciously isn't going to make you look like a great athlete. So get the club bottom of the grip, start to get a feeling for, hey, if I had to throw the club, how the club reacts, a little bit of dynamic movement. Once that's happened, once I've got it loaded, my lower body's pretty much done its job then. It's not going to stop. Now the job, of course, is to apply pressure to the back of the ball. So. I mean, ask yourself this, if you were playing baseball, let's say, would you just tuck that in and try to hit it with your arm tucked in? I don't think you'd be any good at baseball if you did. You'd let the bat load and then you've got to get pressure on the ball. You've got to make the strike once you've loaded it. So practice that on a small scale here. Let's let that thing load a bit. And again, pop there like so like that and I can feel that athleticism, that pressure against it. Good image is an impact bag. If you had an alignment rod just opposite your front foot and you had to really whip that thing, I don't think you'd be hitting it like this. I think you'd feel a bit of that and then you pop the bag down there. So hopefully this gives you some possibilities. People have a tendency to think, I talk to people all day long giving golf lessons for decades, this is an extremely complicated game and I have to manage and build from the ground up all these unnatural movements. You'd never be any good or have the most fun if you do that. So if something seems to you unathletic or overly contrived, even if generally you think you're on the right track, you're not going about it the right way. Hope this helps you.